once the war started that massive wealth which the Jews had accumulated is now going to be used strategically for the purpose of influencing the direction of the war to get the prize that the Jews want what is that prize? to destroy the Ottoman Islamic Empire dismantle it and to cut off the head of Islam namely destroy the Khilafah that's the prize they after the next prize is to liberate the Holy Land and to get the Holy Land for themselves this is the prize they after between 1914 and 1916 German submarines now make a surprise appearance into warfare as when Israel launches her big war we're going to see weapons that the world has never seen before being introduced into warfare hmm. when the German submarine entered into the war it tipped the scales on the side of Germany and by 1916 Britain was on the verge of defeat German submarines had surrounded and marooned the island of Britain. The French government had fallen and Germany had occupied France and Britain was on her knees. This is the moment that the Jews were waiting for. Now the Czech is going to talk. It's called financial diplomacy. <laughs> the Jews, this is the German Jews, went to the British government and said let's make a deal let's make a deal we will intervene in the war with massive financial assistance to you massive and we will bring that dark horse into the race but that dark horse didn't want to come into the race American public opinion was overwhelmingly against involvement in the war and the most famous American of all was not the president he was a man who had established the assembly line for producing motor cars and what was supposed to have been a luxury item for only the rich or you could you could see how the rich people were grinding their teeth in anger when the, this man caused the motor car to become accessible to ordinary Americans for seven hundred dollars you can get a motor car one thousand dollars you can get a model T what is his name? Henry Ford and this man did something else to his workers he didn't bother about what was the market wage no he said I am concerned with paying a just wage and that market wage is not a just wage and so he paid his workers a higher wage than the market wage hmm? and so he won the hearts of the American people he became an American icon his name was Henry Ford and he was totally opposed to American involvement in the war but when the Jews went to the British government and said let's make a deal the British government said deal and so Jewish money the diamonds of Kimberley began to roll and Jewish money now enters into the war in a massive way and Jewish influence over the media in the United States is now made to work and American public opinion is being brainwashed and slowly slowly transformed until suddenly to the consternation of Henry Ford and so many Americans Franklin Roosevelt declares war and the United States enters into the war Britain with this newfound wealth and with the assistance of the United States now has a new lease of life and the war now takes on a direction that the Jews wanted from the first place it is in 1916 that Jassasa went to work with British spies, British spies in Arabia. Lawrence of Arabia, of course, is the most well known of them. These British spies were sent into Arabia, posing as Muslims. And they went to two actors in Arabia, two. 
One was Sharif Hussein, Sharif al Hussein, who was appointed by the Khalifa in Istanbul as the Sharif of the Hijaz, Makkah and Medina, in control. Makkah was under the control of an Arab battalion, but Medina was under the control of a Turkish battalion. And I wish I could understand why the Khalifa insisted on the Turkish battalion under the under the leadership of Fakhri Pasha to defend Medina. I don't know why. So when the British spies went to Hussein, they offered him the moon. <laughs> they offered him the moon. We will liberate the land of the hated Ottoman Turks and we will give you independence and freedom and you will now become the king of the Arabs. Remember, Britain is not talking about Khalifa, Khilafa. Eh? No, no, we'll make you the king of the Arabs. And we also prepared to offer you a little, you know what, just seven million pounds. Huh? Seven million pounds at that time is what Bill Gates has now. Sharif Hussein, the great-great-grandfather of Abdullah, in Jordan now, then betrayed the Prophet Muhammad betrayed 1400 years of history of this Ummah, violated the plain and clear command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in Suratul Ma'idah, in which He commanded us, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tat do not take the Jews and do not take the Christians as your awliya. Do not establish an alliance with them in which you become dependent upon them and subservient to them. Do not do that, says Allah. Ba'aduhum awliya wa they are protecting friends of each other. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Whosoever from amongst you turn to them for that kind of an alliance. You no longer belong to this ummah. You now join them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Surely Allah will never provide guidance for a people who commit such an atrocious act of wrongdoing. And this is precisely what Sharif Hussein did and what all his descendants from that day to this day have been doing. But the chickens are coming to home to roost now for Abdullah. And the chickens are coming home to roost for Abdullah. When Mr. Bush attacks Iraq, then you're going to see Abdullah's suitcases at work. <laughs> yeah. It, they all packed already, you know. <laughs> they all packed already. As soon as Mr. Bush attacks Iraq, you'll see where Abdullah is going to be heading for. Sharif Hussein now accepts seven, seven million sterling pounds and enters into a military alliance with Britain and declares himself independent of the Ottoman Khalifa. Once the Khilafah in Istanbul had lost control of Mecca and Medina, had lost control of the Haramain, had lost control of the Hajj, you pull the carpet, you pull the rug from underneath the feet of the Khalifa. His Khilafah is now losing legitimacy. Can anyone be Khalifa? Can you appoint a Khalifa here in downtown Lakemba? Can Mullah Umar have been recognized as the Khalifa? No, why not? Because when the Hajj comes, Amirul Mu'mineen Mullah Umar will have to apply for a Saudi visa to perform the Hajj. <laughs> huh? And if the Saudis reject the visa, the Khalifa can't perform the, visa, the, the Hajj. All right? And so the British calculated, if we can wrest control of the Haramain and the Hajj away from the Khalifa in Istanbul, then the legitimacy of his Khilafah will begin to crumble. 
And so this was 1916. The British spies then went to the second actor in the Arabian Peninsula. I mean, Britain has a PhD in deception. If you want to destroy the Khilafah, okay, you have to make sure that it cannot be restored. How can you take the entire world of Islam with so many ulama and ensure that not only is the Khilafah destroyed but it cannot be restored. That's a tall order. How to do it? 